Hi everybody, welcome back to a sedate DWF channel. Lately I was playing a lot with floppy disk drives, as you may have guessed if you follow the channel, and I thought I'd use one of my FSX64 to raid some floppy disks ridden with other non commodore drives. However, when I powered on this one, I discovered it just shows the infamous black screen. Now, this particular machine still has all original ICs from 1983, so it's a bit sad to discover that something died. This SX64 is a quite low serial one. I think GA4 is the manufacturing plant prefix. This machine was manufactured in December 1983, and when I got it, it was still working fine, except for the disk drive belt that was slipping. So now, something decided to celebrate its 40 years anniversary by dying. In fact, I think last time I powered on this machine, it was December 2023. I never look forward to work on the SX64. It's a very tightly packed machine. 5 inches color CRT, the internal speaker, a very good switching power supply, this is the disk drive electronic board, and the main 64 CPU board. This is the cartridge connector mounted on a separate assembly. And down here we can see the disk drive mechanism. All PCBs are held in place with these removable plastic rivets. Since it is not so easy to extract the CPU board, I always first try to have any possible clue about the fault, like touching the ICs with my finger. And in fact, the one that was in this socket which is the character generator ROM, got very hot as soon as it was powered on. And if we try without it... We get a garbage screen, but with the correct colors. So the CPU is now executing correctly the kernel code. Sounds easy, right? However, with a replacement ROM, we have again a black screen. The second black screen, however, tells us exactly what is see is faulty on this machine. Let's understand why. The first symptom was the black screen, that can be caused by many things, including the CPU not executing anything because of some bus conflict. Then I've noticed the character generator ROM getting hot quickly, and I decided to remove it that made the CPU start and execute at least the kernel initialization code that sets the correct screen colors, but then replacing the original ROM with a non-good one did again result in a black screen. But a good ROM can only do harm on a shared data bus if its chip select pin is active at the wrong time or always active, and there is really no other possibility since the ROM was borrowed from a working machine. Now, in a C64, all the ROM select signals are generated by the PLA, so I'm sure the problem is a failed PLA in this case. To extract the CPU board, we must first remove all the screws from the back panel and free the whole power supply assembly. Then unlock the rivets from the input-output PCB, so it can be unplugged from the CPU PCB. It was connected here. Then we unplug the external video connector from the CPU board. And finally, there is enough space to extract the CPU PCB from the chassis. So now I can work on the PLA, which is this one. By the way, this EEPROM contains the modified SX64 kernel code. It's not a replacement, but it was installed at the factory. Probably the mask ROMs with the new code weren't yet available at that time. 
So now I borrowed the PLA from this C64. That of course works fine and installed it on the SX64 board. The character ROM is again the original one. I still have the IO PCB disconnected, but that's okay for testing. The machine boots correctly, but of course there's no cursor because of the missing CIAs that are on the disconnected board. At this point I just need to program a blank PLA. For more information about the C64 PLA and the clones I use, you can find a link to one of my old videos I made about it in the description down below. Unfortunately, these clones are not available anymore, but I still have a few spares. So now I installed the newly programmed PLA. And the machine still starts fine as before. So now I've put everything back together and I'm going to run the usual test program for the C64. This wasn't a very difficult repair, but I hope it was still an interesting one. Of course, the kernel fail message is because the SX kernel is different from the stock C64 one. So everything looks fine. That's it for this video. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.